Hello, everyone. Welcome back to some more Let's Play Underrail. In the last episode, we defeated Chort down in the Deep Caverns, and then we turned the cube to the Faceless. Six showed up during our elevator ride back up to not the Deep Caverns, and filled us in a a little bit with what has been going on in regards to Southgate Station and who was responsible for all the trouble that began. Hadrian Tanner. After getting back here and talking with the other leaders of Southgate Station, Vera and Ezra apparently, we investigated his room and discovered a strange bed. <laughs> what did they call it? Suspension cell or something of the sort? And a panel that we couldn't interact with. Very similar to what we found in a abandoned section of the Institute of Chort. We talked with the South Gate Station folks and filled them in on the majority of what had been happening and the jobs that we did for Hadrian Tanner, up to and including the battle against Chort but we decided not to inform them about Six. We have effectively now beaten the game, and talking with Vera will give us an option, I believe, to finish the game, as will whenever we, I believe, click on one of the trains in Underrail. Might only be the one in front of Southgate Station. We have the option to go to North Underrail to follow Six and complete the game that way as well. But we've got the DLCs to do, viewer, and so I figured we would spend a little bit of time in Underrail proper, getting geared up, talking with various folks about what they think now that the Faceless have left, or retreated, and then uh, do some merchant stuff. Although we might do these things in a different order. First, we should talk with Vera because we're here. Then I think I will cut the recording and do some merchanteering. And then when we come back, we'll be talking with more folks in probably Core City about what they think now that the Faceless have left. So let's go ahead and get to this. Do I have anything left around in here, by the way? It'd be kind of fun if I could actually figure out what the medallion was is used for here this time. None of my characters have ever figured it out, the ones that have actually gotten the medallion. And I don't believe anyone who's played this game has figured it out either. And once again, the closest thing I have to figuring it out is our cursor looks pretty much exactly like this looks like during conversations if I move the cursor away from the actual dialogue screen. We'll show that again when we talk with Vera, which we're going to do now. So let's go to the administration. It feels good, by the way, to have best of the game on screen again. Our fourth time together, viewer. When I started this, I wasn't so sure I'd be finishing this Let's Play, so I'm glad at the very least we have finished the main game. And I'll get a chance to try the new Heavy Duty DLC, which I've heard is more or less a test of your build, for your endgame build, as opposed to the expanding upon the world of Underrail, like the Black Seas DLC had done. All right, hello, Vera. While there are still signs of concern intertwined with into her expression, you notice more confidence and resolution in her stance and speech. Did you rest well, Tim? I think I did. She nods. Do you know why I wanted to speak to you? You needed me for something? Yes. To be more specific, I want to offer something to you. How would you like to become one of the Southgate Station counselors. Why me? South Underrail hasn't been this turbulent ever since the breakup of Biocorp. Earthquake, Faces Invasion, Night Station's integration, and increasing conflicts between Underrail Protectorate and the Free Drones, to mention but a few. After you left, the Council discussed you and your recent first-hand experiences throughout South Underrail. We feel that you know uh, what you know would be of great use to our station. And that is why we offer you this position, and it is something upon which we all agreed. You don't have to answer right away. 
Think about this. You will most likely take over some of Tanner's duties, some of the ones you could manage. At first, then... Well, we'll get into the details and specifics after you give me a positive answer. To... You want to become a counselor, Tim? So as you can see, if we hit number one, this ends the game. And we go to the ending... Is it a cutscene? Collage? Collage. Which shows what occurs to the two underrail and the various stations we had been to. It also includes the DLC from the Black Sea, if you have purchased that. Well, what benefits does a counselor get? You will be able to directly influence the future of Southgate Station. Right now, we all live in similar living conditions, so do not expect a significant improvement in that regard. However, you will receive better pay, respect both in and outside of Southgate Station, and more. We already have a big house in Core City. We're the Invictus, and can get paid over a thousand Charons for any battle that we do. Not that there's any actually available at the moment, and not that we need much in the way of Charons anyway. I don't really, myself, like being a leader. Having been a supervisor for two years, it's not to my liking. I don't like giving people orders. I personally prefer following them. I'm a soldier, not a general. Not even a captain, or even a sergeant. <laughs> I will have to think about it. Certainly. There is no pressure on you. We simply feel you would be a valuable contribution to the council. I will be here once you make your decision. I understand. Thank you, Vera. So, how's Laura holding up? Did you manage to speak to her? She's still unconscious. Pasquale told me her condition is stable, but he doesn't know when she'll regain her consciousness. We will have to be patient. I delivered the trade documents, by the way. Excellent! It's good to know I can count on you to get the job done. That was from the original bring the trade documents to the, uh... <laughs> to the ambassador over in Junkyard. I've, apparently, I never told Vera that we completed that a long time ago. See you later, Vera. We don't even get anything for letting her know. We got rewarded for that an age ago now. Okay, let's visit the other folks in Underrail and see what they think about the Faceless's retreat. I guess we'll start with Lucas. Everyone's talking about Tanner's disappearance when they should be talking about yours. Where have you been all this time, Tim? You came here to restock, huh? I did. Let's start with that. So, do I have anything he wants? Nothing I'm willing to part with. Alright, let's see if he's selling any better components. I'm not imagining he will. But it would be nice to have some sort of verification. One way or another. And the only way I can I can rule out better components is by doing this often. Now, Southgate Station used to go up to about 150 for its components before the Institute of Chort. I'm oh, sorry, at, and even at the Institute of Chort. So, until we find better than that, I guess we just have to assume that things haven't improved. Hey, Lucas. What do you think of the Faceless Retreat from Core City? Well, Tim, I think this is another victory for humanity. I mean, the way I see it, you got these augmented monstrosities emerging from the deep and attacking us, wanting to suck our blood or eat us or whatever. And the way the invasion started, it seemed like we were going to get overrun. Then all of us, together, we fight back. Every station, together. Get away, you damned abominations. And we prevailed. The malformed are back in their gloomy pits, waiting for the hour to strike again. Now, the point of the story is, I'm glad they're gone. <laughs> Gotta go, Lucas. But you'll be back. <laughs> Do we have anything to sell him that I stored in these shelves? I might have something here. I don't remember if he has boots, if he wants boots. So let's take some of this with us. Normally, if you were to do this stuff off screen. Let's see. He's not buying boots today. Okay, but he is buying 
Probably bullets. That's most of his money. Perfect. And we'll just leave the boots here again. Southgate Station is one of the only places I can think of that buys boots. Not Sometimes maybe Oscar will buy them, although I can't remember him ever doing so now that I mention it. Okay, so let's go to the commons. And we'll talk with old Jonas and Arlene. Hey, Jonas. Jonas seems to be deep in disturbing thoughts. As you address him, he seems to snap out of it and quickly get back to his usual mirthful self. Huh? Still running about, I see. Ah, uh, you youngsters are full of energy. I got more... Uh, actually, we don't have a question about the tunnels. Let's barter. I actually don't need anything from him. He's not going to sell anything. Actually, he might sell high-quality stuff. I kind of never go to Jonas to buy anything from him outside of the very first time I meet him. And even then, that's usually to buy a single item, a trapper's belt. No news regarding Tanner yet, huh? I think Vera and Ezra are going to dig out a lot of secrets now that the man himself is gone. It's going to be good gossip, if nothing else. So, what are your thoughts of the Faceless Retreat from Core City, Arlene? Good riddance. Want a drink to celebrate? Sure. Do I, do I get one for free? No! And the drink you're offering me is root soda. I have to purchase it, like all the other f food items. Alright, let's go ahead and get some, uh... We'll take two... Meal sandwiches. Private quarters. No. Private quarters, we, we've been here already. There's no one else to talk to. Unless... I'm pretty sure there's nothing else for us to find in Tanner's area. So let's go to the medical and talk to Pasquale and check on Laura. Now that I think of it, Tanner never ever came to my office. He was never ill, never hurt himself despite how much time he spent out. Funny. How's Laura holding up? She is stable, unconscious, but stable. Her wounds would have been fatal if not for the faceless, and I have to admit, their medicine is something out of this world, so to speak. And besides taking care of here, it must have been her, they even left her a gift. What do you mean? The faceless have implanted a device in her throat which pretty much serves as replacement larynx, as her own vocal cords have been completely destroyed. I am not talking about just retaining the ability to speak, but to fulfill two functions that come before speech, preventing food from entering the windpipe and allowing leverage when lifting heavy objects by closing the vocal cords. The device is an engineering miracle, from my perspective at least, but it serves Laura now, so inspecting it further is impossible. What are your thoughts on the faceless retreating from Core City? What is most important is that it ended well for us and that things are slowly returning to normal. Well, it's most things are in Underrail. As for the Faceless, the only thing we've learned from this, or at least I have, is that we are at their mercy, no matter how highly we think of ourselves. We must be careful. Anything to trade? Three medicines today, so we'll just begin trading some of the massive amounts of Psy Boosters that we have. We will want more ampules again, since I do not have nearly enough to break down all the creature bits. Let's go see if we can say hello to Laura. There she is. She doesn't appear to be conscious. Okay, so now let's go to the engineering labs and we'll talk with Ezra. Tim? 
oh, we can't talk about the fa oh, we must have already talked about the faceless at some point, or we don't have an option. To he doesn't give us his opinion about it. Okay, well, let's trade with him. We do have this pseudo-spatial projection trainer, so we'll sell that to him. And is he selling 116, 74 electric discharger, 114, 122, nothing here that would indicate to me that there's better quality gear now available after beating the game. We can get 300 bucks for this trainer, Southgate Station, so we'll take that. Thank you, Ezra. We already talked with Harold, so we can skip him. So, Agonobi and Pens, and then out we go into the world. Or out I go into the world, since I'm going to do some stuff off screen. Quinton. Anything on Tanner, Tim? No? Hmm. What are your thoughts on the Faceless Retreat? He shrugs. Good. Excellent. I'm more worried about what's going to happen here now that Tanner's gone. And he's not selling any better cave hopper leather. I wouldn't expect anything better than like 35. Nothing I need from you, Quentin. And finally, Big Brett. There's the uh, we were ne we were kind of next to him. There is a gentleman who uses psychokine uh, psych psychokinesis. Is that what it's called? Well, that we've skipped entirely, but we haven't even talked to that gentleman, so we will continue to ignore him. I just came back from med. Laura's still unconscious, but Pascal told me she'll pull through. What's your opinion on Tanner's disappearance? You don't want to know. Maybe I do. Well. In that case, I think Tanner is one lying son of a hopper's ass who's been deceiving all of us these years. Yeah, yeah, he's an odd character, but there's no shortage of those in here. Look at Ezra. Look at you. I actually thought that bastard of a man was caring about this station. And I'm not someone who trusts easily. Wherever he is, I hope it turns to hell for him. You have anything to trade, Big Brett? I agree with Big Brett's opinion 100%, which shouldn't surprise. Since we've actually, since we actually know what happened to uh, Tanner, somewhat. Okay, so that's it for Southgate Station, everyone. So I'm gonna cut the recording. I'm gonna go to Core City and do some merchant stuff. I'm gonna actually gonna run around for quite a few places, do some inventory management, and when I come back, we should be in Core City. I will see you guys then. Give me a few seconds. Hey everyone! Alright! Off screen, I sold a small handful of things. I didn't have much prepared in advance, however. But I did go back down to the Deep Caverns twice and moved all the other things we stored earlier, most of those things, I suppose, up to our house. With the exception of probably half of the creature bits. That's going to take a lot of time to move all of it. I should probably head down there with ampules to make moving all the intestines a little easier. <laughs> that stuff weighs a ton. In any case, with that stuff moved and the red dream mushrooms by the elevator having respawned, the side beetles are probably very close to being respawned, and I'll be heading back down there again off-screen to raid the weapons and armor that are down there and bring the best stuff back up here with me. But I'll do that much later. We don't need the money at the moment, by the way, because we have 12,089 Stygian coins after my recent selling. So we should be good, I think, money-wise for the foreseeable future. Well, in a kind of related note, for that foreseeable past, we're now here to talk with Bernard, who should have made us some super steel plates. With all four of the refinery plans turned in, I'm expecting something around quality 150 or better. Hopefully, we get 170, but there's no guarantee of that. So let's see what he's created for us after our hours long adventure. Days probably for Tim here in the Deep Caverns. 
Hi, your plates are ready. Here you go. He hands you some super steel plates. All right, we only got one set of them. Let's see what quality they are, viewer. <laughs> the lowest it probably could have been. 154. All right. Well, not the worst. Still very good. Still very good in the grand scheme of things. This would be late game Super Steel plates. We could make even a better Super Steel shock spear than what we're currently wielding out of these, for example. I think. I can't remember what we used. I think it was very close to this quality. However, we have 170 saved. <laughs> Two 170 Super Steel plates. I was hoping for something better here. I think we'll convert this into fibers in case we want to swap out our tabby boots for other tabby boots instead in the future. The cave hoppers head tabby boots are very nice. They give us a good amount of dodge and evasion and they lower my sprint's cooldown by five turns in particular, which is nice. That plus one agility is also nice to make a few of the skill checks that we've had to come up against or that we have come up against in the past. So I'm not complaining. But we'll never make another pair of those again because we can't get a good enough quality any longer since no cave hoppers will drop the quality I need of their leather to be better than what we're currently using. Well, anyway, let's talk with Leonie then. Oh, let's first put these here. Hey, Leonie, I have some super steel that needs shaping. I want you to create some super steel fiber. All right, thank you much. And what is next? What is next? Let's go back to our home. We can leave the fiber off there. We want to talk with the with some of the folks, the named folks, in Core City and see what they think about the Faceless now pressing onward, retreating basically, which is what I meant to say. And we'll want to stop by the dude, since we read that his that John Dyson, it was his real name, and he used to work there in Hollow Earth some time ago. After that, I don't know what we're going to do next. Well, I don't think I left a jet ski here in Core City. I think it's over by the deep, uh, by the deep, in the DLC. So I guess we'll go there next and start some Black Sea DLC. Right, first, though. Or, well, I want to do that this episode. We could do some crafting. Well, can, well, do I want to do crafting? We don't have, so the only things I would want to make is a better super steel spear and a arguably better shield. But we only have the bits for the shield to make it higher quality than what we're currently wielding. But we don't have a better conservative part for it, I think. We can take a peek, I guess. We don't have to craft right away. And it's not like I need to worry about uh, running out of juice to teleport around here. Which generally is my concern. Once I drink the juice, I always feel like I'm on a timer. Because I am. Uh, to move around in Core City or other places. Okay, so let's... Wait, I'm in doing this in the wrong order. Or maybe the right order. Let's go ahead and say hello to the people here and see what they say now that the faces are gone. Hey, Jean. Mate! Good to see you! Since the faceless have sadly departed, every, every patron gets a drink on the house. Here's yours. Dominate it. He hands you a mushroom brew. Hey! That's fantastic. 
And we can't ask him anything else about the faceless. All right, then. Uh, I guess while I'm here, we'll take some core chips. A 2% extra chance to crit. Thank you, Gene. And we still can't talk with Harry yet. There's no one upstairs we want to talk to. Let's talk with Oscar, Heidi, and Dercia. Perforated eardrum? How do you feel now that the faceless have retreated? I knew this would happen. I wasn't worried at all. And the funny thing is, we've just replaced violence we don't like with violence we do like. We do like! <laughs> Stay tuned for more arena matches. I know I will. She has not recycled her inventory since I was last here. Okay. Oh, I need to stop, make sure I stop by home because I am out of side boosters, having sold quite a few and left a few others down in deep caverns. Oscar? Hey, Gunslinger. Back for more gear? We can't ask him about the faceless, I see. No, I'm not back for more gear. We already... Oh, Alphabet. There you go. Oh, Alphabet. Really quick. Hey. This is so stupid. Why would merchants refuse to buy my stuff? What the hell? Have you ever been to Deep Caverns? No. I once pulled a button from one of the elevators that go down, but that's as that's close to it as I've been. Why? I found a warehouse block in Deep Caverns, which is full of... Of what? Come on, stop teasing me. Of what? Loot. As far as the eye can see. His eyes almost pop out of his mask the moment you deliver the magic word. All overwhelms him, and his voice fills with excitement. How do I get there? There's an elevator east of Southgate Station which will take you down. Then you gotta follow the road north, and you'll get to it eventually. Someone with your experience will easily find it. I can't thank you enough for this. No one in my life was this good to me. Thank you, thank you. When I get back, I'm gonna get you something. It's gonna be good, yeah. I gotta go. Good luck, Al. Wow! I don't mind losing all the loot down there if it, if it ensures Alphabet goes away. <laughs> Darcia, glad to have you back. What are you buying? How do you feel now that the faceless have retreated? Let me tell you, I was more worried for my hubby than for myself, and he was the one on the front line protecting us all. Thankfully, he made it back to me in one piece, and got to see the backs of those plonkers as they were retreating to their holes. Things are hardcore now. The faces are gone, the tortoises are gone, Taurus are pouring in again, I'm alive, Husby's alive, you're alive! <laughs> what more would one want? Alright, take care, Dracia. I don't think I have anything that needs to be put in here to sell to merchants at the moment. I do not. Okay, let's talk with Halim. I've already checked these merchants inventory, by the way, having visited them and sold some stuff. Halim, welcome back, which is why I'm not doing so at the moment. How do you feel now that the faceless have retreated? Same. Once Tunnelers retreated, I found the as like Core City felt the same as before, during and after invasion. It was, and always will be, a city of extreme violence. Walk around and you will see. Little has changed. Nothing new he's selling. Do I need more batteries? Um... Not, I mean, there's plenty down in the deep caverns, but I don't want to walk back down there. I'll take 12 normal batteries. Oh, for 300 Stygian coins. But we have 12,000 bucks, so you shouldn't complain about that. Uh, I don't know if this gentleman has anything else to say. Let's pop in and talk with Michael. Hello again. All right, nothing else for, from him. We have the food vendors, I suppose, we could talk to. And we have Cortec. So, oh, am I speaking of food vendors? My own food expired. Let's go to residential. 
You know, it occurs to me, we still have explored all of residential, right? We did not go over to really the JKK section and do too much exploring over there. And we didn't talk to at the Avaton guy at all, now that I think about it. So that could be something else we decide to do. Tim says he doesn't really want to do that. <laughs> Harlan? Tim, <coughs> it's a pleasure to see you as always. He doesn't care about the faceless. And I have nothing really to vendor to him. Oops. Okay, so... I can't think of anyone else in Core City except for the food. Oh! John the Beautiful might have something to say. I forgot about him. Let's go and talk with him really quick. Oh, there's also Gorski. Gorski might be interested to know that we are replacing Tanner in Core City, too. So why not give him a visit? Shame there's no teleport in the Black Crawlers area for us to make it easy to get over to that merchant, but there isn't one to my knowledge. What else have we not done? We haven't done the arena. I am uh, sorry, the arena. We did do the arena. The gauntlet. I have no interest in the gauntlet. We're not playing Adi mode. So I, we don't need the Adi points from that at all. <laughs> I would rather really not ever do that again. Hello, John. Hey, pal. Got food ready? How do you feel not the faceless have retreated? Here's how it went, pal. The faceless came here. We're gonna we're gonna take this place, no prob. Then they saw me. Then they left. The mere sight of me scared them away. I mean, I look scary. I mean, because I look hardcore. That's what I'm talking about, pal. I need some specific information. No, we don't. Okay. See you around, John. Probably should quick save. There's always the chance we get zoned out here with an ambush. I'm nervous. <laughs> We beat short, but a, a single mugger can get the drop on us and slaughter us if we're not uh, careful or lucky. And I am guessing that the mutants don't respawn as they didn't the last time we ventured this far. We'll check Dirty Tom's inventory while we're here as well. Not that I'm really expecting him to be selling anything worthwhile. But he does sell higher level components. And there's Gorski and Sneaky. Yeah? What are your thoughts on the Faceless Retreat? Makes my job a lot easier now. However, speaking of tunneling machines... Having stolen one makes me feel a bit uneasy. You know the stories about Faceless coming back for the bodies of their fallen brethren. Does the same apply to Tunnelers? Tanner left Southgate Station. What? What happened? Tell Gorski everything you told the Council. Gorski listens to your story, occasionally nodding at the things you say. After you are finished, he lifts his head up and thinks for a few seconds, his expression unchanged. Could never see through that bastard. And believe me, I've tried. We all tried. This is going to be a big problem for Southgate Station. What are you going to do now? I'll continue according to plan. I'll stay here. Thanks for the info, but I'm more concerned about what happens in Core City than Southgate Station right now. I understand that, Gorski. I'm the same way. Sneaky. Uh, we cannot ask her about the Faceless. Dirty Tom. Let's see. So first off, 
I don't have anything to sell him that he's interested in. 103, 108 quality, 102, 109, 100 electroshock generator, 109, 102. Nothing here that strikes me as being... Well, I'll, I'll, sorry. There's lots of decent things here. Components for weapons and what have you. But nothing that I'm interested in. Oh, come on, Tim. On, the, on screen, Tim. <laughs> you really have trouble getting through that gate? So where to next? So, let's get to the elevator, and we'll check the food merchants. Sir? Sorry, I didn't mean to disturb you. Quick save. This is the room that had the one ambushing mugger with the crossbow bolt. But I guess she's not here. We would have been killed already. Okay, so we'll start with this gentleman. Mo? Mo is his name. Amount of celebration burgers. Just to let you know, friend, they were so delicious I sold them out in a few mere hours. And maybe if we get invaded again, I'll make some more. I want to try something. Alright, so he's not going to tell us anything new. But as long as I'm here. We'll take some side beetle soup. And I guess that will do. I don't really need anything else, right? I'm pretty sure I don't. I'll take another John's special, which is going to make this very expensive. But we've got the money for it. Let's see what Zilla has, right? That's her name. Oh, you know what? We can check out the Institute of Chort and see what's happening out in front of it. If anything at all. Hey, Zilla? Ah, customer! What can I get you this time? How do you feel now that the invasion has ended? We haven't been turned into cyborgs, and the business is going quite well after the blockade has been lifted, even at this station up here. So I feel quite hardcore, she smiles. All right, let's take... Uh, I guess we guess we might have a barbecue while I'm here. And since it's kind of closer to walk to it than to take the teleports to get here, we'll visit the Institute Chort and see what it looks like. From the outside. And then we can take the university teleport to the dude. And then back home. And then we'll make, we'll do crafting probably for the rest of this video. And then the next one, we'll start the Black Sea DLC. Why am I in combat? Okay, we can just end combat. What happened there? I'm curious. I hear the faceless music. Faces are present, but they're inside. Lieutenant Brandwind is here. Let's talk to her. The tall female officer turns to you. She easily strikes you as an overly masculine woman in her appearance, as her wide shoulders and angular lines testify, but demeanor as well. As a consequence of these observations, you cannot escape the feeling that she must have shattered a significant number of male egos in the past. Even her steely gaze seems to radiate a certain dominating quality that pierces through self-confidence like a falling stalactite through an unweary spelunker's head, completely destroying it. You have no business here, citizen. I suggest you leave this area, or I'll be forced to order you removed. I had some questions about what's happening here. Her piercing gaze conveys the message far better than words that follow. 
Need I repeat myself, citizen? I really need to know what's going on here. She interrupts you mid-sentence. Not a word more. Leave. She turns her back to you. If we fight the Protectorate now, we get all of them angry at me. I am not yet ready for that. But I won't quite leave, because I don't think she's going to make me do that. This means if we fight the Protectorate here, we will be forced to, uh, well, have the Protectorate to worry about. Let's take her advanced health hypos this way if- Oh! We also want Psy Boosters. Maurice is still here. And we can now search this fridge. Nothing in the fridge. Still nothing- and nothing in the cash register either. Was that person in the bathroom before? Well, if Maurice is allowed to stay here without being killed, I'm guessing we can probably stay here without being killed. Did you say something, dude? I thought you said something. No? Alright. He's got some emotion on him. Oh, I don't need to pick his pocket for side boosters. But when we, when we come back here to kill the Protectorate, We'll make this a little easier for us. I'm surprised you're not on a timer here before the Protectorate actually decide to eliminate you. So, here... I am strategically picking pockets, since I want this battle to go a little easier for me when I return. Which means we want their health hypos and bullets. We don't really want the Protectorate to gain access to into the Chort and potentially all the stuff that would be located within it. So when we come back, uh, we'll do one more pickpocket attempt. Uh, pickpocket attempt? We'll pick their pockets again, and then we'll fight them. I would like to do some exploring of the waterways before I make the Protectorate a permanent enemy of mine. And they already technically are. I don't know how well we'll fight the Protectorate uh, boats, as it were. Dude raises his brew to greet you. How's it going, man? Give me some juice. Let's start with this. We'll also trade our one mushroom brew to make that a little less expensive. Dude, are you familiar with the name John Dyson? Dude remains silent. Staring at an empty bottle of brew in his hand. Dr. John Dyson, a Biocorp scientist, head of psionic research and development at Hollow Earth, Deep Caverns. Uh, are you okay? Dude lets his head drop even further, almost pressing it onto his empty bottle as his unwashed hair falls over his face like a veil. An instant passes, a tear falls, and quiet sobbing reaches your ear. More tears follow, gathering at the bottom of the bottle and merging into one hole. His sobbing gets louder and louder until he raises his head and reveals a dude beard and droopy, tem trembling lips. He wants to speak, and you give him all the time he needs. A few moments later, he wipes his tears, and then... Why is there no more brew in my bottle? Why do horrible things happen to good people? Man, like... Man... He drops the empty bottle and rubs his eyes. After reopening them, though, he looks at the bottle, shrugs, picks it up, and drinks all of his collected tears in a single gulp. So, like... What were you saying, man? Are you John Dyson? 
No, I'm the dude, man. You should, like, pay attention to other people's names. He gets another bottle, opens it, and smiles. Yeah, it's kind of rude, um... Man. Cheers. All right. Talk to you later, dude. And if you are... I don't intend to do any more exploring or anything else of that sort in this video. In the... The next one, we'll go to the DLC and start it. I'm thinking more and more that we may join the pirates. May. It is weighing heavily in my mind at the moment. I've never... So there's a handful of reasons why I wouldn't want to do it. The whole reason I took Pickpocket was so that I could get the Aegis Incorporated Jet Ski as a reward for completing... Uh, for, for sticking with Aegis Incorporated. That was, that was the entire reason why I have it. There was no other reason for me to take that uh, pickpocket. We didn't really need it here. And I dumped 101 points into it, viewer. That could have gone into mercantile and made purchasing higher quality components a lot easier. So I am resistant to joining the pirates for that reason alone. Although we did gain the radio, and we didn't, well, we also did not need that much pickpocket, to be perfectly honest. But maybe we will call on that radio and see if we can reach someone this time around and see if an offer can be made since the Aegis Incorporated are technically working for the Protectorate, right? Or were a member of it. Another reason why I don't want to join the Pirates viewer is I am unfamiliar with anything the Pirates have in, in, in form of their quests. One of the things I don't like doing, generally, is blind quests, especially in Underrail, where I get a bit confused as to where I'm supposed to go or what I'm supposed to do, as we saw with the Oculus quest for the Hux Key. I, that episode took about two hours, and I didn't find it. I had to go and look online, and you guys gave me some, uh, you guys told me where to go to get that Hux Keys quest completed also. Thank you, by the way, for that. I really appreciate that. But I have a hunch it's going to be more of the same. <laughs> so I'm resistant to that. If you guys don't mind that I struggle with potentially some quests, we could still do it. I have a hunch... We will not only, by the way, make the Protectorate hostile against us, but the Black Eels will be hostile to us as well at some point. I've mentioned, though, clearing out the Black Eels from Junkyard and potentially having them as an enemy, if nothing else, just for the fun of fighting on a jet ski out in the normal waterways. So, maybe we could do it. Anyway, those are my thoughts. The good news about joining the pirates is we would learn more combat techniques to my recollection. It would also be something completely new, though I don't think we would gain any... We would lose the option of learning anything from the MD5 discs. I've already read them in prior Let's Plays, so it's not like you guys can't go back and listen to me read those again, but I don't think I have an episode dedicated to such. So you'd have to find out where I read all of them. But they're an option. As well for more of the lore of what happened there. Once again, I'm familiar with it. Maybe you guys are not. Huh. Anyway, those are, those are some of my thoughts on it. All right, so now let me put a break here, viewer, because it's time to do some crafting. I'm going to be trying to make a bunch of different weaponry based on what we brought back with us. 
and looking at what we can make for a shield and for a super steel weapon. Another spear. We may go... Oh, I may uh, activate the cheat engine. Oh, well, hold on. I'm, I'm babbling now. So let me put a break here. And once again, there's going to be no more exploring, talking, or doing anything not crafting related here. So uh, if you guys don't care about that, thank you for watching what you did. And maybe I'll see you next episode. Otherwise, hang around here for like 25 minutes of crafting or so. <coughs> uh, hey, everyone. A few things. It's been a few days since I recorded the earlier bits of this particular video. And in watching my crafting segment, which was about 40 minutes, it's really boring, viewer, and I don't want to subjugate you guys to that. Even if it's optional, I still don't feel you guys would be that interested in it, so we're not going to record too much crafting. I'll just show you a weapon that I made, and then I'll show you what we're going to craft, and we'll craft it. <laughs> I, think that will, I think that will do. I've made a slightly better super steel spear from what we were using earlier. It has a little, I think, more energy. The durability's higher. We've picked up, I believe it's six min damage and about 10 max damage. We used a the quality 170 super steel plates to craft this. I'm gonna hold on to the 177 on the off chance that I do manage to find a quality 160 or better electric discharger somewhere in one of the DLCs to make a super high quality, very, very end game, the best I ever could probably hope to make a uh, shock super steel spear. But right now, this is what we're using. So slightly better than what we had. Actually, no, slightly better is the wrong term, better than what we were using. But as you saw, we were able to get through the deep caverns with that shock super steel spear and the feet short. So, well, in part, thanks to a crit <laughs> or several crits, one crit a turn, but I'll, uh, that's pretty good. Uh, it's, I'm not going to complain, and I'm going on a tangent. Next, I would like to craft another energy shield. After using the cheat engine to cycle merchants' inventory, I have come to the conclusion that their quality did not improve after we beat short. So they're still limiting what they sell to me to about quality 153 or so. So that sucks. <laughs> because that means, that means we're not going to make a super high late game shield. But maybe that's for the best. Because from the bits I've got, most of which are rather good, it still requires more electronics than I currently have. So, here's our energy shield emitter, and if I put down a base, I put down the low frequency modulator as our primary, and our 169 plasma core, we can craft this, which is fairly good, but I would like to add on two more additions. A conservative low frequency shield modulator, this way our dissipation rate is decreased, and a medium shield uh, modulator. Uh, we probably should actually do it this way, where the medium is the primary and the secondary is the low. This way the numbers are even better compared to what they would be otherwise. But as you can see, we need an electronics of 183, which we don't have currently. Oh, and I leveled. I leveled up. We'll cover the level up at the beginning of the next video. Just a heads up. <coughs> Assuming I can record it, because COVID's back. It's a rebound, and it's awful. My electronics currently is 172. So, we can get 183 to do the crafting, but we have to do a little bit of, uh... stuffing things in our mouth to do it. So let's do it. So the first thing we want to do is have John's special. This will give me plus five to all my stats for a little long, uh, for 20 minutes. Which now brings me to 178. One point less than I need, 
in order to create that shield with the low modulator first. <laughs> I swear to you, viewer, it's not the case at all, but I, I had thought it said 175 for the low modulator. In any case, it's still not enough, even standing here and even after having leveled myself the final time in the game. What are we going to do, Tim? <laughs> no problem, says the Tim. We can get ready to craft this shield. There we go. And then we can have our Hyper Cerebrix, which will improve my intelligence. Oh, I thought it was by three for eight turns. By two for eight turns, which should give me the points I need to craft this shield. There we go. If there was anything else I needed to make, this would have been the time to do it because I've only got 30 seconds left on the Hyper Cerebrix. But there's nothing else I think I need. And we will learn how to make the Hyper Cerebrix, as I believe the blueprint is someplace in the Black Sea DLC. I believe there's also at least one more Hyper Cerebrix somewhere over there. So this way, if we do require some uh, more electronics in order to craft the Super Late Game Spear, we will be able to do so. John Special is also 200 Charons, and we are sitting at 12,100 total so far. So money is not an issue at the moment. Just trying to get the merchants to sell me the things I want is. In any case, that's it. Let's go ahead and put on our conservative shield, full charge it, and then viewer that will do it for this episode. So thank you guys for watching. I did craft a bunch of different armors, <coughs> pieces, of, pieces of electronics, weapons and what have you to sell to merchants. Once again, that's just too boring for me to, for you guys to watch me do that. I also spent about 20 minutes agonizing over what I was going to take when I leveled up before I did so. So we'll cover the level up at the beginning of the next episode. We're all done with the crafting. We made a better sh spear. We made a better shield. And I, oh, and I converted those 154, just in case I didn't do it on, I haven't done it on screen yet. I converted those 154 steel plates we got from Bernard over to fibers, which I'll use to create some, I think, better armor when we hunt down more greater siphoners and get a quality 180-ish leather from them. All right, I'm babbling. I'll stop here. Thank you all for <laughs> watching. <coughs> Oh, and I will see you maybe in the next one. Take care, everyone. So what could be in here that requires a 165 lockpicking? What? Garbage! <laughs> Garbage is what's in here.